Erev Tov. I'm Stephen Ben Danun on this uh, Shabbat evening here, uh, Shabbat ending already in Israel, and bringing to you a very serious, very serious breaking news uh, information that has been coming out of Russia. Uh, in fact, here recently, an interview that was done in Germany with former president of Russia, that is uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. Mikhail Gorbachev, for those of you that may know, uh, was instrumental in bringing the Soviet Union to a diplomatic or, or democracy uh, of sorts during his uh, reign as president, uh, followed by Boris Yeltsin. And uh, he was interviewed today, and uh, he warns of the tensions over Ukraine, and it could spiral into a nuclear war. This was on uh, the Moscow Times uh, it was posted there. It was first posted in the Berlin uh, newspaper uh, in Europe. And uh, so I want to read to you some of the, the, the very serious things that he is saying here, it's things that we've been noticing. As just, if, just to recap, let me remind you, things that Russia has been doing that have seemed to be very odd. Uh, they have been stockpiling on medical supplies, as they call it, life-threatening medical supplies. Uh, according to the news article from the Moscow Times, it was as a result of the falling ruble. Of course, the ruble has fall, fell 40% in value to the United, U.S. dollar. Uh, they have also opened up the military for the interior troops of the nation to former Soviet republics, something that was signed into law on the 2nd of January by Vladimir, uh, President Vladimir Putin. Uh, so, therefore, makes you wonder if they need new reinforced troops inside the nation where would the current troops be going? It sounds more like they would be, there would be a possible deployment. Uh, there again, this is all hypothetical, but uh, on, on our part here in examining the information that we have before us though, but it seems to be a real possibility. We have to keep in mind that the Russian bear, as from a biblical standpoint, as they're pointed out as, uh, we keep, they keep getting pushed around by the United States, by the administration, the Obama administration, by Ms. Psaki, President Obama. Uh, everybody wants to push him around. And yet, at the same token, a nation, of course, Russia being known against the Jewish people, I have noticed in several comments lately by President Vladimir Putin, he has taken up for the Jews. Uh, he actually demanded that the Ukrainian soldiers that are, that are, uh, that are fighting the separatists in Ukraine, the Russian uh, side, that is, were wearing swastikas. He condemned it and said, is this really what we need to go back to? He also was one of the first uh, presidents to, to uh, contact the French uh, people and send the condolences to the Jewish families that had lost their lives in France as a result of the terrorists there and called it a terrorist act. So not to say he's always going to love the Jews by no means. We don't say that. But the point is, though, as he He's showing some interesting sides to him, and yet at the same time, it is very obvious that he may be preparing for war. In, uh, in a speech that he had made, uh, or excuse me, in a play that was done in Russia, as we recap on one of our other news broadcasts, we brought to you how that they were uh, mocking for the children. Uh, they were mocking uh, Obama as being ignorant and Ms. Psaki the same way as being ignorant and foolish in the things that they're doing, and that they keep pushing Russia. And that Russia, though, has one thing on their side. And they began to name them the other characters. They named them off. They were all nuclear silos. Of course, also, we know that uh, Russia as well, uh, they played a clip of Vladimir Putin's speech there and where he talked about you can only push him. And he referred to himself as the bear. You can only push the bear so far. Uh, so anyway, as I bring that up, just to bring this up to your remembrance here, I want to go to you right here quickly and show you uh, from the Moscow Times, uh, which they take it from Berlin's paper, former Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev warned that tensions between Russia and European powers over the Ukraine crisis could result in, ma in, in a major conflict or even nuclear war in an interview to appear in a German news magazine on Saturday. Now, let me mind you as well, the former uh, president to, the Czech, to Czechoslovakia also, in an article, I haven't brought this out to you as of yet there, I was looking at this on another news article recently, warned uh, the U.S. That, and the European Union that the continued push against Vladimir Putin and, and Russia 
is a dangerous posture to be taking. I think it's very good advice that he gave there. Um, he did not seem, he was not against Vladimir Putin, but he was warning the European Union and their push against them. It kind of reminds me of, uh, look, in fact, Germany is kind of spearheading this whole issue between Germany and France, but mostly Germany. Germany has really been pushing this issue here, and it kind of reminds me of Nazi Germany when they wanted world dominance. And uh, they're pushing again to take dominant control over certain parts of Europe. Um, so anyhow, we continue on. He says here, a war, this is uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, this is quote unquote, a war of this kind would unavoidably lead to a nuclear war. Uh, by the way, he's a Nobel Peace Prize uh, winner from 1990. Uh, he was uh, told this to Do uh, Dr. Spiegel's news magazine, according to, uh, ex excuse me, Der Spiegel News Magazine, according to the uh, excerpts released on Friday. We won't survive, this is another quote from him, we won't survive the coming years if someone loses their nerve in this overheated situation, added Gorbachev. By the way, he's 83 years of age now. Uh, and then he says again, this is not something I'm saying thoughtlessly. I am extremely concerned. And that concerns me as well. If you think about it, Gorbachev, Mikhail Gorbachev, the former president of the, of the Soviet Union, he was a very level-headed leader. He was very much interested in bringing uh, democracy to his nation. And he worked very well with uh, Ronald Reagan and during the Bush times. Uh, but we definitely see if he's concerned, of course, he knows what goes on in Russia. He's a former president of Russia. And he, as he clearly says, and this is what's interesting here, uh, if someone loses their nerve, you have to understand, Russia's president can get angry enough to order a war to begin. Uh, the article goes on to say, tensions between Russia and Western powers rose after pro-Russian separatists took control of large parts of eastern Ukraine and Russia um, uh, annexed Crimea in early 2014. The United States, NATO, and the European Union accuse Russia of sending troops and weapons to support the separatist uprising and have imposed sanctions on Moscow. Russia denies providing the rebels with military support and fends off Western criticism of its annexation of Crimea, saying that the Crimean people voted for it in a referendum. Gorbachev, who is widely admired in Germany for his role in opening the Berlin Wall and steps that led to Germany's reunification in 1990, warned against Western intervention in the Ukraine crisis. It's a very good warning. Uh, <clears throat> the new Germany, he states here, the new Germany wants to intervene everywhere. He said in the interview, this is Mikhail Gorbachev. Watch what he says here. The new Germany wants to intervene everywhere. And he's the man that helped liberate bringing down the Berlin Wall. In Germany, evidently, there are a lot of people who want to help create a new division in Europe. Sad to say that, isn't it? The elder statesman whose uh, perestroika uh, restructuring policy helped end the Cold War has previously warned of a new Cold War and potentially dire consequences if tensions were not reduced over the Ukraine crisis. The diplomatic standoff uh, over Ukraine is the worst between Moscow and the West since the Cold War ended more than two decades ago. Now this, this was in the Moscow Times. I want to take you to TASS. Uh, TASS is a little bit shorter uh, report here, but they also quote some points that he makes. Uh, in the interview, he says he pointed on the uh, catastrophic loss of, of trust in relations between the West and Russia. That was his quotation word, uh, quote, quote, unquote, catastrophic loss of trust. Uh, serious, catastrophic. Uh, Berlin on January 10th, this was uh, when this uh, came out on the TASS agency, ex-president of the former Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, as voiced criticism of the policy of anti-Russian sanctions and called for a dialogue between the West and Russia. If in condition, excuse me, if this, this is Miguel Gorbachev quoting here, if in conditions of current tense emotions, anybody's nerves fail, we will not be able to live through the following years. He said in an interview 
with Der Spiegel, published on Friday. He pointed to the catastrophic loss of trust in relations between the West and Russia. He says, quote unquote here, we need a new thaw, he stressed. He condemned German politicians who in the words were seeking to part, take part in new division of Europe, quote unquote, during the Second World War, Germany tried to extend its sphere and influence eastward. What other lessons do we need, he states. What other lessons do we need? Now, the point is, what he's trying to say is, look what they did. Look what Germany did when Germany was a nation. This wasn't very long ago now. you got to remember, the people that were actually part of this are still, many of them may still be alive, and their children and grandchildren are now running the country. So they had all this indoctrination ingrained in them as well. Regardless of the fact the United States and Russia split the nation and ruled over both nations, they are now, once again, their own power, and they're trying to build up. So he goes on to stay, say here, uh, during the Second World War, Germany tried to extend its uh, sphere of influence eastwards. What other lessons do we need? He said he understands that the West policy of sanctions against Russia was, uh, was as he puts it, unwise and extremely dangerous. Now, I'm going to take you to another bit of news that happened in Russia. We reported on this yesterday, but I need to bring you into some very interesting information to think about. Because as I said to you, Russia is looking to bring in new bodies, new people to, to be troops in Russia from the former Soviet uh, states that can speak uh, fluent Russian to guard the interior. As I said, does this mean there's going to be a large deployment? We know for a fact there are Russian troops in America. What they're there for, who really knows? I have sources from Washington, D.C. that have confirmed this, that there are Russian troops. They're both out in California as well in the northern states and even up in Montana area as well. There are Russian troops on the ground, thousands of them, in fact, and they were trained for civil unrest in America. So could this be a plot for the New World Order? It could very well be. This may be one of the reasons why America has a setback. It could be that it's, it is only a pretext for war to make it look good. Not really sure about that, but anyway, here's something that really concerned me. I, I reported on this news article for you uh, the other day, um, and that was bizarre sleeping illness descends on a village in Kaz Kazakhstan. Uh, Kazakhstan, excuse me, in Kazakhstan. The reason why the article, that, and this, by the way, was uh, brought out in uh, the Moscow Times as well, says a Russian woman has fallen uh, the latest victim of a mysterious sleeping illness that has gripped a small village in Kazakhstan, causing uh, its sufferers to fall asleep for no apparent reason and stay so for days at a time, four and five days at a time, by the way. Um, and by the way, the doctors do not, they can't figure it out. They can't, they can't find any trace, anything that's wrong. Uh, of course, Kazakhstan is also a, a known place for a uranium mine, but everyone that has ever been tested physically for their work in the uranium mine never had such uh, problems with the sleep, sleep illness, as they've called it. This actually began in 2013. It's only happened on two different occasions there, and it seemed to subside, and suddenly, all of a sudden, it came back. About 100 people actually fell asleep to this particular quote-unquote illness, but there's no virus, there's, no, there's nothing detectable according to the researchers. Uh, it says researchers have found no trace of any anomalies, poisons, or elevated radiation levels around the village, nor any abnormal test results in sufferers except for the fact that they just stay asleep according to, to, me, to media reports. Now, we're not getting to see the medical reports on this illness. Now, I don't, I, I, I'm going to step out on a limb here and I have to say to you, I don't think that it's an illness. I have a feeling that what we're seeing is we're seeing an event that, was, that occurred 12 years ago in Russia, in Moscow, when a certain theater, they took hostages and Russia ended the siege using an actual chemical that put people to sleep. Let me remind you of this here. Uh, this article here happened to come out two years ago. It's just a reminder at, at the 10-year anniversary, Moscow Theater siege. Questions remain unanswered. Now, this is 10 years after that siege. This was in 2012 this, this article came out. 10 years ago, Russia and the world held their breath as Russian special forces surrounded a theater where nearly 1,000 people were held hostage. The siege ended tragedy in, in tragedy and still provokes re, uh, recrimination. 
October 23rd uh, of 2002, 40 Chechnyan militants headed by warlord Movsar Bayov took 912 hostages in Dubrovkov. Excuse me, Dubrova, Dubrovka. Um, theater in Moscow where the popular musical Nordost was showing. Three days later, Russian security services pumped sleeping gas into the hall, stormed it, and killed all the attackers. But some 130 hostages died, most not at the hands of the gunmen and women, but apparently because of the effects of the gas. Ten years later, many questions remain unanswered, and many people feel the victims have not received justice. Uh, many experts say that the operation itself was carried out in a professional way, but the people's safety was sacrificed at the order to maintain total secrecy. Now, they call it sleeping gas, but we really don't know what it was because Russia never would reveal what it was that they used to put them to sleep. In fact, they would not even reveal it to the doctors, so the doctors were unable to test anything. Um, now, the thing is, public health services were not warned in advance, as the article says. Uh, sleeping hostages were carried not, uh, not out by medics, but by policemen. The authorities d uh, did not acknowledge the use of gas until eight hours later, and even then did not disclose what type of gas it was. So doctors did not know how to treat the patients. The Moscow's P uh, chief public health doctor, Andrei uh, Solowski, and President Vladimir Putin himself insisted that the gas could not have caused death, but is, but it is its name and chemical formula remain secret. I have a feeling that what Russia was doing is they've been trying to develop some type of gas that will put people to sleep long term. Back then, and I remember it very clearly, watching the standoff on television when I seen this unfold. I even wondered then. Is Russia trying something, a chemical way of putting people to sleep, not killing them per se, but to use it as a war weapon in the future? Well, they've had another 12 years to develop that. Could this be what's going on in Kazakhstan? Could they be testing it? Now, some of those that, that come out of it, they, they report having hallucinations when they're coming out of the sleepness after four and five days. A lot of different side effects they come out with, but then there's no other signs, no other reasons for why they had this problem. And it doesn't seem to return either. It doesn't seem to be a virus that can be catchy. Could be that Russia's experimenting. Can't say for sure, can't say for certain. What a way, though, if they wanted to take over a country, put the country to sleep. Could be possible that they could do such a thing just as that. What if they were to do that to the United States? wouldn't be hard to take over a country if they could put all the country to sleep. I'm Stephen Bendenoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom. Be on your guard. Be watchful. A lot of things are happening. If the newscast that you see here on Israeli News Live is a blessing to you and you would like to support the work that we do, it is nothing but a free service to the public worldwide. You can go on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, and there's a contribution place where you can donate at. We thank you for your support, and God bless you.